All right, so who can tell me some of the uh, accomplishments of George Washington during his presidency? Austin, give me one. Uh, he was able to keep the Americans out of the war. Good. Good. During uh, his presidency, he was able to keep the United States out of any wars. Okay, Austin, you have another one? Yeah, he was focused on making the election interference. Focus on uh, expanding the executive branch, right? His the presidential powers, he was the first president, so obviously he wanted to set up the executive branch. He was basically setting up the presidency. JT? Wait, um, uh, he was keeping the federal government like, in line and everything. Good, he wanted to help keep a strong federal government, right? Because we have the Constitution and we're going away from what? Going away from the... No, Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation, okay? Uh, Brayden. If you look back in the day when they had it, um, the runner-up for president would be the vice president. He would be vice president. Who is, uh... George Washington, vice president. If he didn't have one, yeah. Since no one uh, ran opposed, I guess George Washington would have got to uh, pick his vice president. But to get George Washington, you can do your research. As um, okay, anyone else know any of the uh, accomplishments of George Washington? What what were some of the precedents from the guided reading we talked about? The precedents that George Washington. Oh, Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Um, how about how many terms did he serve? Two. two. Served two terms, right? He was a, a president that established. He was starting to kind of establish terms, serving two terms. Okay. Yeah, Braden. Didn't a president serve more than two terms? Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, was Franklin. It the, like, I think it was Franklin FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Yeah, it was a Roosevelt. Um, go ahead. Cause wasn't it like during the war or World War Two? Um, how much was it? What in the history? It was. I mean, FDR is right there. It's 1933. Uh, okay. Um, he also establishes a cabinet. George Washington establishes a cabinet. Remember, that was from the guided reading. Um, so he was setting up his advisors who's going to help him win the presidency. He also, he be writing this stuff down. also is going to um, establish a. Terms and what? Terms. Oh, just said it. Love. What did he, George Washington, establish? Terms. Oh, yeah. 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 cabinet. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then he also established. He established a foreign policy. What was his foreign policy? Because at the time, what two countries were at war? Um, it was Britain and England. Britain. Oh, no, no, sorry, England and France. England and France. Good, JT. <laughs> England and France were at war, and what was George Washington's policy on the war? Stay neutral. Stay neutral, good. Yeah, he said stay neutral because he was afraid of that what, JT? Oh, well, I was just going to ask, he said establish the cabinet, terms, and foreign what? Foreign affairs. His policy on foreign affairs, which was to just stay neutral. Okay. Um... Because he didn't want his federal government to get crushed. Good. didn't want the government to get crushed, and he was afraid that the U.S. might not win a second war against Great Britain. And his finances, the finances of the... Good. With finances, uh, he helped eliminate debt because the country was in debt from the Revolutionary War, and so George Washington helped to eliminate some of that debt. How much is debt on the United it gets bigger every year. Is it a billion or millions? Oh, it's in the billions for sure. It might be trillions. I'll set it up. It's ridiculous. Wait, what is it? There's like this. Trillions from the It's a little off topic, but you can look at the U.S. The um, and 2019, 22.8 trillion. Wait, what are you Yeah, we a lot of debt. From what? From everything. From everything. So here's the United States debt clock. Here's oh my the, gosh, yeah, I'm on it too. So this is 
every second. This is our debt right here. Twenty that's trillion. That's a trillion. Million, billion, that's trillion. Twenty seven trillion. Why is it going why? Every at second as we speak, it just keeps going up. Why? why? Because like, I'm rich. No. Shut up, Bryson. That's when, we, that when we gave, have you all heard of the stimulus check that went out? Oh, no. um, yeah. Yeah, it's borrowed, so that's part of it. And now they want to give another stimulus check. My sister didn't even get a new stimulus check. And then, well, if you made too much money, you didn't get one. She <laughs> doesn't make a lot of money. <laughs> um, but yeah, now yeah. They, they want to give out another stimulus check, which is another trillion yeah. dollars. Yeah, my grandma didn't get hers till like three months after. My sister doesn't have it any money. It depends on if you uh, filed your taxes. <laughs> I'm getting my money. You don't even have a trillion dollars. Alright. I don't have more money than you right now. Enough money. I cut myself. How much money you got on you right now? Okay, so now we're kind of moving on. We're going to. Uh, Alright, so now we're kind of moving on. We're going to John Adams. This is who we're talking about. Okay. Um, so, first, uh, as we talked about yesterday, uh, there's two sort of political parties beginning to form. We have the Federalists and we have the Republicans. What was George Washington's warning in his farewell address? What did he warn against having? War. Yeah. More than two yeah. terms. Yeah. <laughs> Away from war. He didn't want to start a, a war between them. Okay, he warned against having political parties. Is what he, in his farewell address he said, uh, be, aware, be cautious if, when creating uh, political parties because it might create division. Um, and, it, and now we have political yeah. parties and we have, we have division, right? Yeah. So, but um, there's two sort of political parties forming. We have the Federalists kind of led by Alexander Hamilton and the Republicans who were led by Thomas Jefferson. And these are some of the differences between them. The Federalists obviously supported strong federal government. Um, they supported the British in the British and French War. Um, they favored having a national bank, uh, emphasized manufacturing, shipping, and trade, versus the Republicans who were emphasized agriculture, supported the French. They opposed the bank. Um, and believe that the people should have the political power. Okay, so the election of 1796 was won by John Adams. He ran under the Federalist Party, and Thomas Jefferson lost. He was ran under the uh, Democrat Party. I mean, sorry, he ran under the Republican Party. It was called Democrat Republican also at the time, but he ran under the Republican Party, and he lost to John Adams. But how did uh, the vice presidency work in 1796? Um, the, the runner up. The runner up got vice president. So in 1796, Thomas Jefferson got the second most electoral votes, and by law, according to the Constitution at the time, the second highest electoral vote becomes the vice president. So Thomas Jefferson is vice president. Down here, it talked about, we talked about it a little bit yesterday too. It says, Describe Donald Trump as vice president to Joe Biden uh, would be. Uh, I want to see that. That would be torture. Would be war. I don't think we'd get a whole lot done. <laughs> They'd be pretty unproductive. <laughs> they would just disagree so often. <laughs> the U.S. would die. Yeah, they'd be rough. Okay, so that's kind of. I mean, maybe not to the extent of what it is today, but. It would be a little bit unproductive with Thomas Jefferson being the vice president to John Adams because they would all they would disagree on a lot of issues. Okay, one of the big things that John Adams had to deal with during his presidency was the X Y Z affair, and so the U.S. had signed a treaty saying that they're going to be neutral in the war. They were going to stay neutral in the war between England and France. And France felt that, that them staying neutral benefited England. They're like, you're staying out of it. We helped you during the, the American Revolution. We came in and helped you against the uh, British, and now you're going to stay neutral. You're like just trying to help out the British. It's kind of how the French felt. Um, so Americans had some ships, and the French, because of they were upset that the Americans wouldn't take their side, they captured some of the American ships 
And rather than declaring war, John Adams sent over some diplomats to France. What's a diplomat? Anybody know what a diplomat is? Can I ask your no. I'll tell you if we don't know. Um, what did you say, Maya? It's kind of like a militia. Um, it's uh, JT, you have to. An official <laughs> representing a country. Okay. So a diplomat's kind of like a representative or like a mediator. He sent over some basically like politicians, people who were in politics to kind of just discuss with France and try to make an agreement with France. Um, and then when they get there, the, the diplomats. Um, the French sent their agents on their behalf, and they said that negotiations would start at a $250,000 payment to the French uh, and $10 million in loans to France. So they're saying, uh, because we got our ships captured, they're saying in order to get all that back and stuff, you have to pay us $250,000 to our foreign minister, and then you got to pay our country $10 million in loans. Wait, why? to get our ships back because they captured our ships and that's was that was their term saying that if you want your ships back and you want your people back and stuff Wait, like the french captured them yeah see the um so they were upset the french was upset with the united states um because we stayed neutral in the war they wanted us to support them in the war they just felt like since we were staying neutral we were really just trying to help england even though we were just staying neutral and so we had some ships out in the ocean and the French captured our ships. And instead of going to war with the French, we tried to work it out and make an agreement. And they said, uh, actually, you need to pay us money. The French were saying this. And then, uh, but we didn't exchange them any money. We didn't assign any agreement. When we reported back to John Adams, they didn't even list the agents, the French agents that were trying to get all this money. Instead, they just referred to them as X, Y, Z. So instead of listing the names of the French people that were requesting, making all these big demands, they just came back and said, uh, instead of listing names, they referred to them as X, Y, Z. And so that was called the X, Y, Z affair. Um, okay. So again, rather than declaring war, which George Washington had warned against um, in his farewell address, George Washington's foreign policy was to was to what? Stay neutral. Stay neutral. Okay. Um, so instead, they built up the U.S. Navy. He was like, "We're gonna because our ships got captured, we gotta strengthen our navy." Mm -hmm. So they tried to strengthen the navy with these big ships called frigates. So you can see here's an example of one, a big ship. Um, to help at, escort some of these American ships as they go out. They would send out this big battleship basically like this with the other ships to kind of protect it. Okay, another thing that happened under John Adams was the Alien and Sedition Acts. Okay, the Alien and Sedition Acts, uh, John Adams was trying to uh, put a stop to or slow uh, immigration people new people coming into the country um, he said dangerous people are coming into our borders and the president could expel newly arrived foreigners deemed dangerous to the country so if the president thought that someone who came into the country who was new into the country was dangerous they could expel them send them out of the country and originally it took five years to acquire citizenship under George Washington. It took, if you were new to the country, it took you five years to become a citizen. But John Adams changed it to 14 years to become a citizen. And many new immigrants who were, were supporting Jefferson, because who uh, ran against John Adams? Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so a lot of these immigrants that were coming to the country were supporting Thomas Jefferson. And so the, yeah, Adam's changing the citizenship to 14 years is gonna make it to where those new people who might support Thomas Jefferson can't vote because they're not citizens. So he's kind of- Well, that's kind of smart though. <laughs> I mean, it's, he's uh, taking a little bit of advantage of his power. Yeah, my- How are they dangerous? How are they dangerous? It's just if they, if the president deemed them dangerous, if he thought maybe they were spies for another country, or if um, he thought that they were criminals um, 
in another country and they're trying to flee to the United States to escape jail in their country or escape prison that they come over to the United States like I think uh, so that it was just up to the president whether he thought they were dangerous or not um, so there's lots of criticism of government and government officials or policies and it John, John Adams makes this a felony he says it's uh, gonna be a crime to criticize the government or to criticize government officials or policies. And reporter, reporters and some members of Congress were imprisoned under the Sedition Act. Okay, so what is this a violation of? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, right? Okay, the Alien Sedition Act said you couldn't criticize the government, but that's a violation of, the, of your Bill of Rights, your freedom of speech. Okay, it talked about um, in the video yesterday, in crash course um, a member of Congress he was actually arrested under the Alien and Sedition Act so a member of Congress he didn't like something that was going on in, in the government he talking bad about the government John Adams has him arrested sent into jail anyone remember what happened to him yeah, I'm glad you said no he, he didn't, didn't die. die he didn't die yeah, a congressman, his last name was Lyon. Lyons. Oh. He, he actually won re-election. So he ran for re-election in prison and gets re-elected to serve another term while in prison. Um, he won election. So it just showed how unpopular the Alien and Sedition Acts really were. People really didn't like them. Yes, right. A, A, that man was just really, really liked, or B, uh, he was arrested, like, right before the election. Yeah. Um, yes. What are you going to ask the question? What? Talking bad about the government. So you could, at the time, you could get arrested for saying bad things about the That's government. Up. That's messed up. So Jefferson, he opposed these laws, and um, even though he was vice president, his powers were limited. He couldn't do a whole lot because the president still had more say than him. He encouraged states, though, to nullify or to cancel those laws. And Kentucky and Virginia were two states that passed resolutions stating that they would declare laws constitutional or unconstitutional. States' rights were a key component to the start of the Civil War. So Kentucky and Virginia are basically saying, hey, this, this Alien and Sedition Act is violating the First Amendment, and we think it's unconstitutional. It's not following the Constitution. Okay, so uh, John Adams, good or bad president? Bad. Bad. Okay. Not uh, one of our best presidents. Okay. Did he get one term, right? Uh, one term, yes. Isn't John oh, Adams bad. on the thing on Mount Rushmore? No. Okay, go ahead and log off and uh, put your Chromebooks up in the number that they go in. And plug them in. Plug them in. Yeah, plug them in, guys. You'll be able to. Yeah, for sure.